Okay, you've probably been wondering where I've been. Well, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of tournaments, um, there's a lot of games I've recorded, and there's not a lot of time to do any commentaries or anything. You know, the sun finally came out, so I'm not just playing Netrunner all day uh, like I am in the winter. You know, I'm going biking, I'm doing actual life things, you know, like a real person. Not some nerd who stays inside all day, so you, you know you got to wait for a rainy day for me to get around to this now in the summer. Uh, I actually recorded uh, a tournament before this one, but it had a really low turnout, and it was none of the games were really particularly exciting. For this tournament, Honor and Profit just came out. Oh yeah! So uh, thanks to that, there should be uh, some more exciting action here. Um, you know, Honor and Profit was just so huge, so many game-changing cards, um, you know, really flipping everyone over on their heads. Uh, games kind of before it aren't really re relevant to the competitive scene. Um, I mean, you can still learn a lot of, you know, fundamental Netrunner from older videos, but I mean, just so many cards changing the game, you know, it's, it's truly a living game. Um... As they say it is. So anyway, uh, another news. This is the first uh, the first game you're going to see with my new camera, the GH4, 1080p instead of 1080i. Uh, I could record the game in 4K, but that's rather pointless. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know if you'll notice a difference, but the major difference for me is that it's a lot easier to record games because A, there's a tilty flippy screen uh, on the camera so I can, you know, take a look uh, at what the camera sees without having to get up and like stick my head behind the camera and stuff like that. Um, the other major difference is that I have enough, this camera can be plugged into the wall uh, with, you know, to get infinite electricity rather than just having to change batteries. So I can record an entire tournament, and that is exactly what I did. This is the tournament, the net monthly, well, bi weekly Netrunner tournament at the 20 sided store that occurred on May the 4th, 2014. And this is the entire tournament. Well, every game I played <laughs> in the tournament. Um, all four rounds, all eight games. In this video, you're going to see games one and two of round one. I'm playing MVN on the left, making some news. On the right, Chaos Theory. I forget this guy's name. Sorry. Sorry, bro. Uh, but he was kind of new. But he was not bad for someone so new. He knew how to play, uh, mostly. Just, I think, new to the tournament scene. Here he is, running my R&D, trashing my ash, losing all his money. And he's doing some kind of kooky motivation thing. Okay, dude, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> I mean, you read, it's so annoying they do these sorts of things where you read through the cards that come in a data pack or in a set, and it's obvious, this is the obvious combos that they make. You know, it's like, yes, it is obvious. This card goes with that card. Make a deck with these cards together. Please do this. It's like they're just telling you to do it. But it's not actually a good idea. Like, it works. The, the combo happens. But you don't win with that. <laughs> right? So if you're going to print something like that, it should be strong enough that it should be able to win. Otherwise, why are you doing it? Like, you know, if motivation doesn't win games, it's like, great, you made a bunch of cards that go together and do this funny thing and don't actually get you closer to winning. All right, so he's doing some strange stuff, splashing easy marks in the chaos theory. I've never seen that. Um, and an early woman in the red dress. This early woman in the red dress, you're going to notice... Uh, all right, so I score a Beal just early. Um... So there's Woman in the Red Dress. I don't think we forget to do Woman in the Red Dress even once. You pay attention. Okay, so here, um, I don't draw the card, right? Uh, why not? Well, because it's just a pop-up window there. <laughs> so he could run, if, you know, if the next card's an agenda, he's going to run and take it. But in a way, by drawing the card, I might encourage him to run my pop-up window. 
and give me a credit, which I would like very much. So perhaps drawing the card was the right idea. Well, you're going to see that going forward um, for most of this game, that woman in the red dress doesn't really buy him very much at all. What it buys me is a crap ton of free card draw. Uh, even though he sees what I'm drawing, it doesn't really help him. It does not help him. Even though you know, I draw these non-agendas off of R&D, thereby increasing the odds that the next card, if he runs R&D, is an agenda. That's not really going to help him too much either. So he's got an Armitage for some money, and I'm drawn through. Dropping a pad campaign, and I got a ton of ice. And here we go. Now that I've put a slightly nicer ice on R&D, I feel safe uh, drawing up. Yep, I'll draw that pad campaign. Oh no, the next card on R&D has a good chance of being an agenda. Much better because I've just removed a non-agenda from R&D. But I have a not, it's not just a pop-up window there anymore. So please, please run it. And he does. Caduceus. So strong. Still so strong. Probably always will be strong in the game of Netrunner. Oh, you've only got four credits and no link. That's a shame. I'm going to take all three credits back. Yeah, free res. Uh, I'll only trace two to end the run. And I don't think he's even going to pay that. He's going to let the run end. So, thanks. That was awesome. Woman in the red dress from here on out. Super card. Just give him the Corp card draw. Here, Corp. Draw the cards you want to draw. Why, thank you. I'm NBN. I sure would love to draw cards. Alright, he runs and tries the pad campaign. Oh, you wouldn't pay two, three to go through to R&D and see a card. But you'll pay four to trash an unresed pad campaign. I guess you feel strong with that Armitage, but... Alright, drawing tons of cards because i got a fistful of ice and I need not ice. Because he can't break the ice I've even got. So I definitely don't need more of it. Okay, install a pad that's slightly defended and sweet. And there's a hedge fund. Why, yes, I'll draw that hedge fund for free. Why, thank you for helping my economy. Woman in the red dress. You are so helpful. Putting that hedge fund into my hand. It's so hard watching these games when he has motivation on the table because it's like you think he's cheating because like he looks at the top card of his stack so often and then when he's not drawing, he just puts it right back and it's like, oh my God, cheating. But no, it's just... All right, so he runs that server at least to threaten it. See, for a new player, this guy, he knows how to run and make you, you know, right? he's not afraid to run something with nothing on the table, right? He's beyond that, that stage of total noobness where, you know, you're afraid to run anything unless you have a full suite of breakers and a million credits. And you have to build your entire thing, and then you can start running. No, 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 no. no. He's running right away. Makes me raise my eyes, checking stuff out. All right, so we're taking a little time here. Not really in a big hurry. See, that's the other thing about, you know, um, you know, playing against his deck, right, with his weird motivation stuff, right? It's like, since I'm not used to playing against something like this, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure what the right moves are all the time, right? I, I don't know how he's going to behave. He's not going to behave in a in a you know the way that I know that people behave in a in a game of Netrunner, right? He, he does things I don't expect. Double hedge fund, right? You know, and most people. Right? Oh, I'll draw that sand sand. Yes, right. So it's it's actually a lot harder for me to play against uh, this kind of opponent than against you know a a more predictable you know uh, experienced player. Um, 
Okay, so he's going to test run something. It's a torch. And does that mean that... So the only code gate on the table right now, even though my deck is full of code gates, uh, is that quandary. <laughs> so I'm not too happy to see Mr. Torch, but I, I, I guess it's... I'd rather have him bring that out than any sort of century breaker and start hitting R&D. Because um, I'm looking for agendas right now while I got this huge scoring window, and all he can do is trash a pad campaign with a torch. So go for it. <laughs> I don't really care. If you want to test run a torch to trash a pad campaign, that's that's fine by me. Okay, you test ran the torch and didn't do anything with it. Not even a run. Okay, gonna put down a sand sand and protect it. That seems like a good move. Try to draw an agenda to actually score with it. Woman in the red dress says, sweeps weak. Why, yes, I'll draw that. Eureka, it's a torch. Congratulations. Now, if he was playing Kit, that torch would be hella scary. But it's Chaos Theory, so whatevs. Torch ain't scaring nobody. Also, test running the torch. A turn it advance. Totally telegraphs everything. Right? And because of that telegraph, you'll see I set this up. Roto turret. Goodbye, torch. Pitu. Well, if you didn't show me what you were going to do, a whole turn in advance. I wouldn't be able to wrap my name on the moon. Imagine if he didn't have the torch out, right? He, he did Eureka and then just run. If he would have just, you know, run, then test run the appropriate breaker, right? then run again and click three. That's how you break into a server. But now I've got a res Zansan. Here comes more test running with his no money. <laughs> the Garot. Okay. The Garot tells me, well, that'll take care of the Roto Turret and the Caduceus. So that that is what he should have test run before. Right. And scavenging, okay, you can keep your garrote. I'm going to continue writing my name on the moon. And that's game right there. <laughs> I mean, you may as well just, just forfeit at that point, right? Two Astro tokens, a res Sansan, San, three credits. Um, and the woman in the red dress. Yeah, I'll draw that pop-up window. Get closer to an agenda in my hand. There's Oracle May, the final piece to his combo. He just didn't draw it earlier. And that's the thing, without hostage, I mean, this kind of thing is not super unreliable. Um, 
You know, and even if you spent hostage, it's like, okay, how much time are you spending setting up this Oracle May motivation combo? And why do you, you know, Woman in the Red Dress is for a control deck where, you know, you can basically, you know, prevent the corp from having any remotes or scoring anything. So all the agendas either build up in HQ or you see them in R&D and you can take them whatever you want by milling or something like that, right? It doesn't, like... It, he's just playing it, I guess, because he likes it. I don't, I don't see any synergy between Woman in the Red Dress and, you know, the motivation deck. Right? Like, I don't know. It just gave me a ton of card draw. I got a fistful of ice, even though I have almost no... <laughs> this is relatively... I think I have 17 ice in the deck, and I've, I've drawn 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've drawn more than half of it. Um, well more than half of it. And the last thing I want to see is more ice. Because <laughs> the ice I have are getting the job done. I don't need to draw anymore. Yes, I'll draw the sand sand just to get it off R&D. <laughs> get something else. Oh my god. Please, I just need to draw anything to score and win. Anything. Okay, yes, Oracle May. I'm aware. You get your free credits. We don't have to actually sit there and say the type of card every turn. Because you have Motivation and Oracle May. We're just going to let it slide. What's important here is is the real trade-off that Oracle May basically gives you a you know uh, two credits a turn along with your card draw that you're gonna probably do anyway is the cost is letting the corp see every card that you draw with Oracle May so you know that information is really really valuable to the corp because it's like you know imagine if um, you know I'm worried. Oh no, maybe he'll drop his self-modifying code and run. Well, if I can remember every card he's drawn, and he's only drawing with Oracle May, or he's most of the time, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a self-modifying code, so I'm just going to go for it. Oh, and look, he didn't. Right? That information is, you know, how valuable is it compared to the two credits? Uh, it's, it, you know, it's situational. Um, yeah, Oracle May is sort of an oracle for the corp, not for the runner. <laughs> She lets the corp know what's coming. Oracle May, tell me what lies in the future for the NBN Corporation. Uh, I can tell you the runner is working on some daily casts. Ah, that's not very useful information. <laughs> but thanks anyway. Okay, power draw time. Let's just win this game. Last click, install, and then it doesn't cost any clicks to do that, and I win with the sand sand. Game over. I love just, you know, being able to use the sand sand only, piling up the Astro Skip tokens, right? Winning with like a last click agenda draw like that. It's so cheesy. It's so cheap. What are you going to do about it? Okay, so yeah, um, you know, I don't know who out there is thinking about Motivation Eureka decks. I mean, it sounds fun. You get big, big programs for free, but, um, you know... You have to be able to use those big, big programs. <laughs> if you can't use them, what good are they? What good are they? And you got to be able to get all of them out, right? Because most of the big programs are just single-type icebreakers. So, you know, if you... you, know, you Rika, I got a torch. Okay. And if you're Kit, that's huge. If you're not Kit, well... Right? And then Eureka again, I got a Garot. Okay. You didn't get your morning star yet, no. And you've already gotten lucky and used two Eurekas. Yep. Alright, I hope you were gonna do the same old thing, a third Eureka for three clicks. Are you gonna You know, you gotta get one of your morning stars that cost three influence on top of your deck? Um You know, it's just getting them all out is just not you know, it's not really feasible. I uh, get to draw your third Eureka and have the third. It's, it's even getting one or two. You know, getting two out is already sort of a miracle, right? I mean, getting one out, it's like okay, during the course of the game, if the game isn't over instantly, you'll probably get one thing out for free. Um, you're gonna need Retrieval Run or Magnum Opus or some other way to install those giant breakers, um, because otherwise, you're not installing them. If you wait to try to Eureka all three things, the game is over long before that happens. Long before. Yeah. You think about the money that you're saving doing it? No. Well, sure. 
but think about how long you know that those clicks you spend waiting for it to happen those clicks could have been spent getting the money to just install the stuff all right here's a really frustrating game for me and you know what we have to say about this game hey that's netrunner <laughs> That's what I have to say about this game. NBN! It's me, but not me. Same old Kate deck. Okay, his runner was sort of off the wall, so I got no, you know, I don't really know what to expect from this corp here. So let's find out. Pretty normal plays here. And a beanstalk. All right. I got a sure gamble. I'm going to start face checking. Let's check HQ. It's a wraparound. That's cool. Let's check R&D. That's a pop-up window. Hey! Is he copying me from the game I just played? I'll pay for the pop-up window. And it's a card I can't do anything with. It looked like an ice. And I'll install my data set. Gonna start sucking. All right, he blocks up archives in response to my data sucker, and he sets up a remote. But why block up archives to respond to data sucker if all you have on R&D is a pop-up window? That's not stopping any data suckers. Okay. Let's run that remote. Can't let him just score an after script right away, right? RSVP? Oh. Well, yeah, I'll keep going. I just want to see what that is. Not an agenda. A melange. Oh, how clever. How clever. Well, I've this just seeing that on, what is this, turn two? Yeah, I think it's turn two, right? Um, I've just sort of already resigned myself to the fact that he's just going to have that. Um, you know, it's going to be very difficult for me to, to do anything about that. All right, some dirty laundering, R&D, filling up data suckers, getting money. Right, I've sort of resigned myself to the fact that that Melange is going to stick around. Uh, he's going to have all the money he wants, and I'm going to have to stop him some other way. Um, but, you know, he's going to spend three clicks on that Melange every time he's going to use it. And hopefully that will give me my scoring window. Yep, all right, Melange away. I can't do anything about it. Maybe that's a problem. Maybe, you know, that's that's the weakness of my deck. All right, getting some monies, got some data suckers, hitting R&D, he's got a melange, and that's about it, so. Stroke that card. Okay, setting up another remote. Okay, draw. Draw. I gotta check the remote at least, right? Again, I can't just let him score. So I'm gonna run R&D first. Okay, I didn't see anything. Gotta check that remote. What if there's something there? An Astro script. Oh, it's a toll booth. Okay, I'll pay three. Uh, sorrow. 
See, if I would have had... All right, I got a clone ship. I just haven't been able... I don't have drawing power. That's the one thing my deck doesn't have is drawing power. Right? I can't... Ah, oh, there's the Astro Script. Great. Well, for someone who's new to tournaments, he sure knew how to score an Astro Script. He's giving me all these data suckers. He's giving me all these... All right, is that a Counter-Strike? <laughs> I guess with the Melange, that's kind of scary, but... Is he running a three-pointer? What is he doing? I don't get it. Uh, I cannot draw an SMC. I cannot draw... Parasite. I just have to keep checking R and D every single turn, cause, you know. So like, don't let one slip through. I got a million data suckers, and there's an NEPD, and I scored it. Woo! Got some points. Okay. And got some money from a dirty laundry. I got all three data suckers and a grimoire and a million virus counters. But I don't have anything to use them on. Great, a fem I can't afford. Great. There are like nine cards in my deck that I could draw, right? Three test runs, three SMCs, and three parasites. I haven't seen any of them. Any one of them, and I could basically go nuts. I also haven't seen an indexing, right? So there's 12 cards. Any one of them is going to really help me out a ton. And I've drawn zero of them. Right? Well, there goes my indexing hopes, at least temporarily. <laughs> and he's going to counter strike me off the NAPD. Okay. I, I don't understand people who. You like to do this sort of thing. Okay. <laughs> he trashed some useless cards out of my hand. Thanks. Um, you know, who want to scorch you without killing you, thinking that they'll get rid of valuable cards you were holding on to. It's like, no. <laughs> if I'm holding on to a card, it's not valuable. If it was valuable, I would have played it immediately. Right? And because I draw early in my turn, and not late, or at least I try to remember to do that all the time, um... You know, I don't. I'm not holding important cards in my hand, right? So, net meat damage it doesn't kill you. Net damage it doesn't kill you. Doesn't matter. It doesn't. Damage that doesn't kill you doesn't matter. Why would you spend all that money on a Counter Strike to do two damage? It's like thanks, thanks for spending all your money. Okay, just keep spending your time melanging, giving me more time to go to R&D and such. Come on, cards. The heart of the cards is not coming. Okay, at least I have Inti, so... With Inti, I can run HQ a bunch. Now, you know, I sort of just... He's holding all these cards. I'm not sure what he's up to. I gotta run HQ to find out. Um, I can fill up on data suckers also while I'm there. Not that I'd need any more than I already got. Um, but yeah, if I think about it, it's like, well, if he had an agenda in hand, wouldn't he have already tried to score it behind his toll booth or with his Astro script or who knows what? Um, but I guess he just drew some cards I hadn't seen. And he's setting up another remote over there. Reading some more Reddit, daily casts happening. Is this an asterisk? 
And am I doing anything? There's just something about this game that was just really frustrating, right? There's this melange behind an RSVP I can't do anything about. He's got a zillion dollars, right? But he's because he's melanging, he's all slow. Because I can't draw even a single card. You know, I infiltrated that to see if it, you know, I had to f rush through the toll booth. I guess I don't, because I guess to get through the toll booth, it would... I wouldn't be able to trash that sand sand. Right? Alright, so now I have an Atman. I guess I can do things with that. But I can't do too much. Because, you know, it's going to use up his data suckers faster than... Uh, you know, plus, if I try to use it to get through the toll booth, I'm going to pay the three credits for the toll. Which is not affordable. To do more than a few times. So just keep running HQ. There's a flare. All right, that's a bit ridiculous. All right, more clone chips. All right, well, I have an Atman now, so I guess I can use that to do some stuff. And the wraparounds aren't that big. Uh, but right now, that toll booth is really what matters, right? He's got basically... <laughs> Invincible Sansan. San. Oh, this is Jackson Howard. That was that card hanging off the edge. And now the Jackson Howard's protected, so I sort of lost my chance to go there and get rid of it. Right? So him having that card draw is sort of huge. Okay, so he also put, you know, see, so he put that new card on top of the sand sand behind the toll booth. So because he did that, right, I can't sit around. And I can't atman that toll booth either. I have to try to just kill it off with this parasite. So I went so far to spend all this extra money and time to test run a parasite to kill the toll booth. Because I just, you know, I have to check that card. I can't, can't ignore that. Can I ignore that? So I run there. I have to pay the toll. All right? And then I use four data suckers. Do, 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 do. And I kill his toll booth off. Right? This is a fine play anyway because I feel like he spent eight credits on something. He's not getting his money's worth. Um, and then I access the non sand sand and it's a red herrings. Well, <laughs> you know, red herrings, it didn't do what. You know, the card effect uh, didn't really come into play, but it was absolutely a red herring. I basically wasted my whole turn and all my money um, running nothing. Um, and I could have done something else. So red herrings fooled me, right? And this is the kind of thing that, you know, right, that the new play... You know, a less experienced player can, you know, really, the way they do things will really mess with uh, someone with more experience, right? Because who, who installs a red herrings without also installing an agenda for it to protect, right? Why would, why would you do that? It's, it's pointless, you know? This, this, <laughs> it's a completely useless installation. You put, you know, because uh, exactly what, you know, will happen, happens, right? The red herrings will get trashed, and it'll never do what it's supposed to do. Right? And Ash is another story, right? He'll res the Ash, run the Ash Trace to protect the Sand Sand from getting trashed. So I'll run there again. All right, it's a flare. I have no choice uh, in this matter, right? I have saw the flare before. Plus, I like the fact that I got him to spend all that money resing the flare. And only for me to immediately destroy it. I don't see Flare too often. It's strength 6, so I blow that out of the water. Right? And he installed a face down card on top of a sand sand. How can I have to run that and see what it is? It's an Akitaro. Um, why would you ever use that in an MBN deck? I don't know. And you didn't even res it to make your Flare res cheaper, which you realized as soon as I accessed it. But. 
I don't have enough money to trash that or your sand sand. Just because I don't have money right now. Mostly because I had to pay the toll on the toll booth once. And because I'm spending all this money on these single accesses here, like one credit each, and I'm not seeing anything. Where are the agendas at? Well, Katie Jones, get me some money. Okay. Down to one credit, and I scored an NEPD, and that's it. I destroyed a toll booth. I destroyed a flare. I spent, you know, I spent my load, right? That was, those are my attacks. Those, those parasites right there. I still have another one. I can, I can clone ship another parasite, but it's like, that was, you know, my, my attack there. You know, he puts big ice and he reses them to protect nothing. So I spent my load, you know, my, all my weaponry destroying them, for no effect. You know, one, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting in that, you know, it seems like a really low level play, but maybe it's just so genius, right? I think the reason it worked is, is that melange behind the RSVP that I just, I just can't, <laughs> I just can't do anything about that right now. <laughs> uh, even if the RSVP wasn't there, I'm going to, you know. And I figured him spending, you know, look, he's down to six credits. He hasn't been able to get, you know. I figured he would spend so many clicks on that melange, it would slow him down. And it has. It, it slowed this whole game down. Look how slow this game is. This game should have been over long ago. Is this an NBN game or what? <laughs> right? He's got an Azure token, and he's it's all he's had. How many turns has it been? Right? But as slow as he's going, right, I can't really get things going any faster. Okay, Katie's gonna give me some money. And now we got the Atman at strength zero and a million data suckers. So now we'll run R&D without worry of like Caduceus or anything. He doesn't even res. <laughs> All right, I'll access a Hokusai grid. <laughs> this is the most random deck I've ever seen. A Hokusai, an Akitaro, a Counter Strike. It's like, what is going on? And now he scores. Where did he get that agenda from? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Terrific. All right, he, he didn't, um, I guess he forgot to pay the six to res the sand sand, I was reminding him. I do have five. I could trash that sand sand right now, right? But it feels more important to trash that Jackson Howard. But there's an RSVP in front of it. Ugh. I mean, I could... Use two data suckers and a credit to break RSVP. Or three data suckers and a credit to break RSVP, and then three credits. So I'd go down to one credit just to trash that Jackson Howard. Um, I don't think he would use it uh, if I just broke the RSVP. <sighs> All right, so I have to get rid of that pop-up window, right? This is a situation where, you know, he's going to draw a ton of cards, and he has a Res Sansen and an Astro Swift token. It's super dangerous for me. Um, all I can hope to do is is block him from drawing the things from R&D, right? So I got to get rid of the pop-up window, which is even that is costing me too much money in my current state of things. And I don't have an indexing. I have three indexings. I cannot get one, right? And I can't spend another click trying to draw one because I need to spend the clicks running, Right, time is suddenly running out very quickly. You know, if I spent all my, I could spend all my money trashing the sand sand. Um, you know, but how much would it have really mattered, right? I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't. It, it's. Uh, 
right? And I didn't, you know, it would take me too long to get more money because I've already used my sure gambles, my dirty laundries, my daily casts, right? My only money is Katie Jones. So if I try, you know, it's it's maybe hopefully, I don't know. I'm beginning to think, you know, all those people who use Desperado instead. I mean, there's no doubt Desperado is better than Grimoire, but it's like when I first started playing this deck, the Grimoire was just so helpful because I would be so short on, you know, virus counters. That one X, you know, the margins were so tight. That one extra virus counter from the Grimoire, that one extra memory really, really helped. It helped a lot, right? But lately it's not helping so much. But with new cards like NEPD and, you know, RSVP, Jackson Howard. Well, Jackson Howard's not that new, but it's like I really need those extra credits, I think. All right, so what am I blowing away? I'm blowing away the R the wraparound, right? This way, you know, he's, he's shown he's not going to res the R&D ice, right? So I just have to, you know, have to check, make sure he hasn't drawn when he power draws like that. Right. I have to run a bunch to make sure he hasn't drawn an agenda and I have to run R&D to make sure there isn't an agenda sitting there. All right, I ran R&D. He's got his Okusai grid. I don't care. Okay, I'll take my net damage, which I don't care about either. And was that an NEPD I couldn't score? It might have been. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. <laughs> One credit short. Yep, Desperado would have saved me there. I think it's time to give in, right? You know, people, you know, they're like, why everyone runs the same deck? You know, there must be a way to improve it. It's like, no, it's... <laughs> I'm not basing that on just one game either. There's been a lot of games I've played recently where, you know, I, I, people just give me tons and tons of successful runs, right, for whatever reason. Um, okay, so he pulls his... He uses his Astro Token and his Sand Sand to fully score the NAPD, I guess, because HQ was wide open, and I could have easily taken a credit and run HQ a bunch. And also his Sand Sand server had no eyes. So now he's at six points. He just needs a breaking news, right? R&D, I'll take my net damage, I don't care. Yeah, it's a Beal, yeah, I got some points, finally. How many access, someone go count how many access I've had, right? This is That was probably a mistake right there, trashing the Hokusai for four, right? I need money, and I basically just blew almost my whole Katie Jones on that, right? All, you know, and now, if I see another NEPD, I can't score it. And it's a Jackson Howard, I can't trash, but it doesn't matter. He's already got one, so whatevs. Um, yeah, I needed the credits more than they needed the net damage. I'm gonna take running there. Um, it's not like it's going to kill me, right? Net damage doesn't kill you doesn't matter? Well, I didn't follow my own advice there. I should have let the net damage keep coming, and you know, because I'm drawing cards anyway. And if I draw the card I need, I'm going to play it immediately, so I'm not going to lose it to the net damage. I'm not going to die from that Hokusai. But not having those four credits uh, is a big pain. Um, all right, so he should really just win now. Power draw with Jackson Howard. Score your freaking news. Um... Oh, uh, it's just so frustrating to run and see basically R&D almost every turn. You know, run HQ a zillion times, access so many cards, right? You access any PDs and your credit short. Hmm. Right. 
I didn't have a same. I didn't draw a same old thing. Uh, as, uh, I didn't draw a self-modifying code the whole game. I did not draw an indexing the whole game. All right, so he's throwing all these cards out, right? So, you know, you think, why didn't I run archives to get Jackson cleared? Well, there was no way. Why in the world would anyone throw an agenda in the trash, right, with this board state? And there's another NAPD, thrilling. Okay, so if I would have had credits, I would have scored both those NAPDs, and I would have won. So I did get enough accesses to win. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just didn't have enough money at the right moment because I spent it on, I guess, Tollbooth twice and Trash and Hokusai I shouldn't have trashed. For a total of four, five, six, and ten credits, yeah. But it's like, why would anyone throw agendas in the archives with this board state, right? He wants the agendas, right? So he can score them, right? So now, basically, right now, I'm checking, you know, it's like, okay, he's got an NAPD coming up next, but he can't score that immediately on the next turn. Right, because he used his astroship token. So I just I need to check HQ to make sure that in his big draw there, he didn't get an agenda. So I run HQ three times, and I don't see it. And did he have it? Yep, he had it. So that's the end of that. Yep, is that any PD I couldn't steal? Look how many data suckers I have. Right, I basically didn't need to use them this game. <laughs> Those data suckers. I did not need to use them, right? Uh, except for the toll booth and the flare. So that's actually a lot, uh, you know, if you consider the toll booth and the flare. Yeah, look at all those agendas he left in the archives that I didn't run, because who would leave them in there? And that was decreasing the density on R and D, right? But I, you know, I didn't run there because I would think, who in a million years would throw an agenda away with, with that kind of board state? Um, but I guess someone would. And he didn't seem to be running breaking news, which also decreased his density, um, you know, and made it harder for me to find. Uh, so three NAPDs decreases your density because those are hard to score and they're annoying. And then I guess he's got three Astroscripts, three Beals, and a market research. So all two pointers, no one pointers. Very hard for me to find anything without my indexing. Very hard for me to score any PDs, which I saw two of, which would have won me the game, but I had no money. And you could see from the data suckers just how many accesses I had, how many times I was able to get in. He just let me in, right? That's more taxing than anything, right? You know, people talk about, you know, costing the runner a lot to get in. It's like, okay, I, you know, I'm happy to spend all my stuff to get into a server if I get points out of it, right? What's really, really taxing is when the runner spends everything for nothing. I spent all that stuff to go and run a server which had a red herrings. I spent a whole bunch of credits trashing a Hokusai that I probably could have spent on something better. Um, you know, I mean, if I would have trashed that, I thought that Sansan -San wouldn't matter because, you know, what the board state was. But actually, he ended up using his Astroship token early. Um, and he needed that. Uh, Sansan San to score that final agenda. If I would have trashed that earlier, uh, you know, he wouldn't have been able to score that Astro script out of his hand right there. Um, right? I don't know what he would have done then. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, just, just lots of really frustrating game. You know, the biggest tax on me again was I spent all those clicks on these wide open HQ, wide open R&D. Never sealed them up. He was handful of ice, didn't seal them up. Right? At all. So how can I say no to all these free accesses? So I take the free accesses, and I don't see anything, right? So I spent all those clicks, right? That's worse than replicating perfection, right? You spend all these clicks running and accessing nothing and getting, you know, no benefit whatsoever, right? And that's the other thing, you know, if I had that Desperado, right, man, you know, in, in addition to the data suckers, I would have been getting the credits I needed to win, right? The Grimoire... You know, it didn't, it wasn't needed there. Um, you know, I may just have to, to admit that the, uh, you know, just deal with it. And give my, you know, go to the dar Desperado dark side with everyone else. Oh, well. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to 
round two.